Let's welcome a native of Sweden, now making his home in New York City, New York, USA. He brings a professional record consisting of 26 wins, just one defeat, 14 wins, coming by way of knockout. Here is Otto, all in Wallen. Well, there he is, Otto, all in Wallen. This is the man who was approached this week with so much confidence every time I've spoken to him I believe him he thinks he can beat Anthony Joshua on Saturday night 100% he does he's, he's had loads to say in the build-up to this fight you know he's, he's talked about how he feels like Joshua is mentally fragile how he's mentally weak how he's never really got over that defeat against Ruiz this is stuff that that Anthony's heard before numerous times but I don't think he was necessarily expecting it from Otto Wallin because he feels familiar mm. with him because of the amateurs and yeah. the sparring yeah I think so uh, but again, another extremely confident fighter. Here he is, Mr. Otto Valin. Otto, we were just speaking about you. All good. <laughs> Talk about the the, the, <laughs> the You're confidence. Than us. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. The, the confidence with which you've carried yourself this week in the entire build-up to this. You are here with genuine belief that you will be Anthony Joshua on Saturday night. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't even be a question. I, I feel, of course, I'm confident. Otherwise, I wouldn't take this fight. I, I feel like I've shown in the past that I'm a good fighter. I gave Fury a very good fight, and I take pride in my work. I've been working very hard to come to this place where I'm at now, and I'm just here ready to take full advantage of this opportunity. You've uh, you've looked good, like you said, good win last time out. What have you made of Anthony Joshua's last few fights? I, I mean, he lost to Ruiz, he lost to Usyk, and I don't think there's any shame in that. I think both guys are very good. Usyk is a terrific fighter, uh, but I feel with Joshua that you know he hasn't really been that aggressive, seek and destroy kind of guy that he that he was known to be when he came up. And you know he won Olympic gold, he he became a pro and was knocking everybody out, knocked out Klitschko. And you know he's been at the top of the mountain, so I think it's probably been hard for him to realize that he's vulnerable too, that he also can get beat. And I think maybe in the beginning. He felt like, you know, I won Olympic gold, I knocked everybody out, so I can't be touched, really. So you feel it's a better time to be fighting anti Joshua now than it was, you know, a few years ago? Yeah, no question. I think there's two different reasons. I think, one, he hasn't really looked the same, and I've gotten better. So I've worked very hard, like I said, over the years to get to this place, so I feel like I'm, I'm getting better all the time, and I'm not sure that he is. Do you, do you think he's been a bit surprised by how vocal you've been because obviously you boxed in the amateurs and you sparred and it's just struck me that he wasn't really expecting it from you <laughs> well people t people tell me even my girlfriend she said hey you talked a lot of trash I said <laughs> did I did I really I mean it's just the truth and she said yeah well the truth is you know it's not always what people want to hear or you know the other person of course so I feel like I'm just telling the truth I just I get the question I I, I answer them for what I think of it so but do you, do you think that's confidence oozing out of you? The, these words that are coming back, usually it's slightly out of character, but is it just confidence shining through? Well, it might be, it might be. People keep talking about my confidence. It's just, I mean, it's very natural to me. I'm just being myself. I feel, yeah, I feel very confident. And, and uh, you know, I have a really good team around me, people that knows what they are doing and they've been preparing me for this moment. And, you know, now it's just the time to deliver. How, how are the nerves? Because the pot of gold for the winner is huge. Well, it would be, be amazing. I really, really, really want to win. I got to do everything I can to win. Yeah. And, but I feel like I have no pressure, really. I feel like, you know, of course, I win this fight. I go on to much bigger things. But, I'm, you know, I worked so hard to be here. So I feel like it's time to enjoy it. Where's your mentality at with this fight as in compared to the Tyson Fury fight? I think basically the same. Yeah? Yeah. I felt very good going into that fight. But I would say I've improved since that fight. I felt like when I fought him, I hadn't been on that level before. So I had 12 rounds with the best in the world with Fury. And after that, you know, had a few good fights. And now I feel like much better prepared. I, I've been 12 rounds a few more times. And... Um, I'm more experienced and I'm, I feel like I'm better prepared this time. Is that what makes you a, a better fighter now, the experience that you've gained? I think so, yeah. yeah. The experience does a lot, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And also, 
when I was growing up, it was hard to get sparring over in Sweden when I was living, where I'm from, of course. And then I was living in Denmark when there when I turned pro. Then for the past six years, I've been with Joey in New York and been having great sparring. So that, that's been a huge help for my career. Let me ask you this, Otto. Do you think his mind is fully on Otto Valin? There's the talk of Deontay Wilder. This week he's been involved with Jarrell Miller. There's been kind of confrontations in hotel lobbies. Is he fully focused on yourself? Uh, I don't know. I, I, he probably is. He probably is. But I think it's all good that these other people are being mentioned. And I feel like I said that I don't have any pressure. I feel like he has a lot of pressure. He has to look good in this fight to, to go on and fight Wilder. And... Um, He's probably very focused on me, but there's also other guys messing with him. So I think that's just good for me. And also, don't remember, he was focused on you too. So <laughs> at the press conference. <laughs> it's, it's been an interesting journey for you, hasn't it? Because when you turned pro, boxing wasn't uh, long legal in, in, in Sweden. And I remember the first time I saw you was 2015-16 on a Sauland Nordic fight night, I think, in Denmark. And I remember just killing time in the afternoon and chatting to Joey Gamash and... He was telling me, look, I've got a real, I've got a real one here. He's got good, solid fundamentals, very good work ethic, good student. Did you always feel like you could get to this this level? I did, I did. It might sound crazy, but for some reason, I always believed in myself. From when I first started boxing, I had very good support uh, with my dad, my brothers. They all believed in me very much, and I think I think that's been a huge help. And I always dreamt of this moment, and I believed that I could get here. Just quickly, how do you see Wilder Parker going? I think it's a good fight. It's, it's no easy fight for Wilder. Depends on what Parker brings. I think if Parker comes out trying to box, he might get knocked out. But he, he has to really bring it to Wilder. And then I think he can win. Because Parker, he's been active and Wilder mm. has not been. A lot's been made about the trainer situation. Now, you've, you've had the same team and the same dream the, the whole time, right? He's making a few changes here and there. <clears throat> what do you think of that? Because, look, a change in trainer, it can help a fighter. It can help, but when you change trainers that much, it's, it's not a good sign. And we've seen a lot in boxing. It usually doesn't work out well. And I don't think he's gotten better since he started changing trainers. I think he had a good setup with McCracken and then... Uh, I think that he's looking for something that he can only find within himself. Do you take confidence from that? Yeah, I mean, I don't think about it too much, but, you know, I just, uh, I'm expecting the best Anthony Joshua, so that's what I got to do. And, um, but, you know, I think, I don't know Ben Davis on that well, but I know that when I fought Fury after that fight, he got fired pretty much. So uh, Fury went on to high Sugar Hill and then he stopped Wilder in his first fight back, so. I think Fury got better when he switched trainers, to be honest. That sounds like shots fired from Otto Valin. <laughs> well, it's the truth. <laughs> that's, that's all it is. What, what sort of fight are you expecting from him? Because we feel like he's maybe been a bit gun-shy since that fight against, against Ruiz. Um, but he rediscovered the knockout against Robert Hellenius. I mean, do you feel like that'll do quite a lot for his confidence? Will he go looking for you early, do you think? Or what, what are you expecting? He, he might, he might. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, he, he probably... I would guess that he's trying to come out aggressive, but at the same time, when he does, he's got to get hit with shots, and he doesn't like that. So then he might go back to uh, what he's been doing. We can't wait to see how this fight goes. Best of luck to you, Otto Valin. Great to speak to you. The one and only Otto Valin. Big task ahead on Saturday night. And stand by for Thomas Schreiber, who is now going to bring in Anthony Joshua.